Bismillah, fa'azu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Atiyullah, Atiyar Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalim jahal. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And alhamdulillah that this is a month of immense blessings and immense light. Subhanahu man huwa khalaq nur light and the month of seclusions and wilayat and sainthood and so many realities and always a reminder that Allah put Surah Munafiqeen at 63 which was the, the age of Sayyidina Muhammad and that these realities and to achieve these realities is to overcome the inner hypocrisy and to be sincere with ishq and muhabbat what we've kept describing. That people think that through their actions and their deeds they can achieve these high ranks and proximity and actions and deeds basically show sincerity, they clean and as a result of cleaning shows a sincerity within the servant and that the servant has to move towards the stations of muhabbat and love. So we describe that the people of who means that last night we touched upon the qawba qawsayni o adana in which the who of Allah which is an ancient ocean of hidayat and guidance and wow for love. That Allah created this creation from a Divine love and we described He gave that Divine love into the essence of every nucleus and all its atomic forces and all its atomic realities, all electrons, they're all based on Divine Love. They move because of love, they attract and repel, circumambulate all based on love, a Divine Love. In which Allah grants from the wow of wadood and… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Places within the element, a Divine Love in which its inner reality is based on that. And then those whom wishing to mimic and to move back because the journey is not out but the journey is inside. So that hidayat and wow becomes who. So who is an ocean of guidance and into the oceans of Divine Love, that only through love you can reach the hay and that all the hay of hidayat it pushes out through the wow. So they're both moving both directions. Means the hidayat and guidance dresses the wow and sends out the signal that real Divine Guidance is through love. And those whom heard the signal and they receive the calling, they're moving towards that wow. And as a result of moving into that wow with good character and love, 
Allah opens for them the haq and hidayat in which through their faculties of hearing and seeing and breathing and tasting and their sense of touch to reach towards the Divinely face, Wajik Allah, Wajik al Kareem, the face of Allah that only can be seen by the reality and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad but Wajik al Kareem from the lights of Prophet dresses all those whom come into that ocean of guidance and muhabbat and love. And as a result they dress us, these ulul am that be from the people of who and a who man. Now everyone calls themselves human, human but are they really? And that's why the month of light is the Surat al-Munafiqeen is that don't deem everything and every action that someone's doing from a world of light that it's coming with sincerity, that they didn't achieve, maybe they're not directing themselves into that reality and these are then traversing the immense dangers of these oceans that Allah warns for us. So the attributes are very defined, nobody can lie because we're giving you the, the breakdown from the huruf where the huruf is the truth, not what people think in their mind and in their heart the path is. The path has been laid down and huruf it will explain the path of what Allah intended. That come back to my Divinely love because the wow hits the wow and the hidayat of Allah comes to wow and then the reflection is Muhammadun Rasulullah means then the wow and the love from Allah touches the love of Prophet and then activates his hidayat and guidance. That's why when we flip and show the mirror of attributes, the wow touches the wow means that Allah's Divinely love is dressing that ocean of love that dresses Prophet and as a result Khuluqul Azeem, Ya Rabbi a magnificent character. People got a glimpse of that character when they interacted and came across Sultan al-Awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Ad al-Haqqani, Fattah Sallallahu Alaihi Immense love, immense kindness, immense softness and set the standard for those whom wish to follow in that footsteps. So means that it's not easy, it's not assumed that anybody is achieving that or can achieve that and they call each other sultans, they make each other titles, they call each other every type of title and they have no shame or shyness in making these titles. That the title that's necessary is the title of good character. And if you have good character you teach your people to have a good character. You teach them that the path is based on wudud, that you have to have a, a Divinely love. That love encourages you to respect all humans, all creatures, everything that Allah has created. You have a respect for it, a respect that Allah has created it. And then as a result of being raised with respect and raised with manners, raised with good character, then you understand that now for the Muhammadan reality and those that represent the Muhammadan reality is to have a tashrif and nobility because they carry within them the Muhammadan light. Now people like it, they don't like it. They have to have at least been raised in the manners of the way that to respect that light. 
And that's the danger that Allah draws that on, on this month of immense lights, immense blessings. Then Surah Munafiqeen is coming and telling us in a very short surah all about the hypocrisy of people and the danger of hypocrisy. And we describe many times the biggest danger of hypocrisy is jealousy. That if jealousy should enter the heart of somebody, a shaykh, a person, a student, a murid, a, a, a government official, whatever it is, because all humans are the same, there's no one whom is safe from that, is that if jealousy enters into the heart, it begins to blind their faculties, blinds their eyes from seeing their outer and their inner eye will become blind by jealousy and then blind in their hearing that they don't hear the reality and they don't hear the physicality. So it means every danger comes from jealousy and that was the danger and that's what Allah is, is drawing the attention of munafiqeen that as you're moving in this world the light don't assume Everybody achieved everything and that the, the most danger, dangerous characteristics on this path is hypocrisy in which the, the hypocrisy of those whom don't have what someone else has leads them to bad characteristics, say bad things, act in bad ways, try to demean, defame and disgrace means every type of badness you can imagine. Allah is on this path of light that we're in the seventh month going towards the Hajj and this is the month in which Allah is opening lights upon the servant, this warning comes. Why? Because Prophet had immense difficulty, immense sadness, immense hardships. And the, the greatest danger we described before on our spiritual path is not the enemy outside. You're not scared of Jewish people, Christian people, Buddhist people, Indian people, Hindu people. They're not writing against the tariqah. Nor was that a difficulty in Islam, the danger is amongst ourselves, means that the Muslim nation is most endangered by the Muslim nation. The tariqahs are most endangered by the tariqah itself and its authority and its people and its whole process. So every collective group has their own circle. Right? So in the alam al-Islam, well who's the biggest danger? Who's been killed the most are Muslim by Muslim. So then you narrow that reality for the people who are coming into tariqah and thinking that what this would be different? No because Allah is giving for us anybody on a spiritual path, religious path, a path to improve yourself, the greatest danger is the inner arrogance, inner jealousy and inner hypocrisy. And if you convey that to other people and they begin to catch that sickness and disease then they become in that ocean of hypocrisy. They say they're from a group but yet they talk bad to other people, they talk bad about this, they talk bad about that and other people become confused. Like why are they talking bad? So why? Because that's the path. That what brought down Sayyidina Adam salam. When Allah said, I taught you all the names and then all of a sudden you got kicked out of paradise. So awliyaullah they described that they asked Sayyidina Adam salam, how alama kullaha that Allah taught you all the names and, and you got tricked by shaitan. But that I never thought shaitan was entering into paradise. Well if shaitan entered into paradise, he's in every tariqah, he's in every masjid, he's in every home, he's everywhere. There's nothing that keeps him out. 
that becomes the warning of the path. And that's why Prophet described, don't leave me to a blink of an eye. Means what? To be ever vigilant of everything around me. Don't assume anything that everyone is dangerous, everyone has an inner munafiq, just when is it going to come out? And if they're willing to sit and struggle and fight against it, not let it to come and their battle is with themselves and their inner hypocrisy, battle is not with anyone else. And that's the danger and that's, that's you know that's the, the warning for those whom are on a mirage and trying to improve themselves is all of the inner voices that come. And then you hear the inner voices of people having bad comments, bad thoughts, jealousies and like a rocket ship you to stay firm to your teacher, stay firm to the teachings and pay no attention to left and right. The proof is in the pudding. We say the proof is in this faith in action. The proof is in all of the hearts that have been changed. The proof is in all of the activities that they have manifested. The proof is in all of the knowledges that are being taught and that those whom are consuming those knowledges, the character and the demeanour that is being revealed, that the khuluq al azim that of a good character once they learn the knowledges of reality they begin to go out and feed and help and serve. This is most pleasing to Allah versus uh, some people who just do nothing. But yet they will begin to talk bad, act bad and do insulting actions. And that becomes then the way of shaitan and that's not the way of Rahman. And the one whom is on a path of realities they're ever vigilant. That's why we said post, post articles of the shaykh and then observe the interaction. So when you post something and people come back and say horrific things, that's exactly the teaching. That that group you're dealing with is very dirty and there's not amongst them a shaykh that's teaching or training them. And whomever they think they have as a shaykh, he is not doing his job. And that's why we don't allow the groups, we don't allow big posting groups. Is it for us there's no difference. If people don't understand how tough we are is there's no chat groups allowed, there's no what app groups allowed because for us the internet is a virtual reality. So if tomorrow you say, Shaykh we want to go on the street and protest, it was completely forbidden in tariqah because we know that the street is shaitan. That you go on the street thinking, I want to protest something that was wrong, oh well the street the street is open, shaitan will come, he'll bring the flag that's not your flag and then the news comes and photographers come and they take a photo of you with somebody in the background of a flag and they come back and ask you, well, what do you do with that group, why are you with this group? You'll be set up. Or they do something violent and you say you were there for something good. So you don't go to the shaitan, you don't go to the areas of shaitan, go to the masjid of Allah go on your prayer carpet and resolve your issues, you're not going to resolve anything on the street. So then what's the streets? The groups, the chat groups are the streets but they have a different type of payment, pavement. So these people go into these big wild groups where they're like hyenas, you don't know who's the moderator of those groups. And they start just chatting, posting horrible links, then uh, rebutting and, and attacking shaykhs, att attacking sayyids, attacking this and do this, do that. That's a street. So for our people we ask them, don't make anything like that, don't make groups, don't solicit each other and say, oh, can I use this uh, charity, use this, use that. Stay away from all of that, follow only what the shaykh has as a group and they're very restricted. That we broadcast our links, we broadcast our sobats and that's it. So for us the internet is like the streets, if you don't have a discipline 
then you'll see all of the wildness of our people, we've asked them, we'll find all of these streets and throw out a link and get out. Let them come to guidance and those who see that, wow on this particular chat, this street they're like hoodlums and we've said it now ten times. And each time somebody comes back is surprised, hey they really are like hoodlums, they were like all over the place saying horrible things. Exactly. And that's for you to understand, hey these people have not been taught. These are the same people who think meditation is not necessary, that our channels are not necessary, our continuous overflowing sobats are not necessary. But yet our people don't do those crazy things and they don't talk these crazy ways because their shaykh has a discipline and tells people, don't talk like that. You're an ambassador for Sayyidina Muhammad If you don't have something good to say, don't say it at all. So you don't find our people acting like that and that's what's good. Sometimes people think that all you guys are the same. No, no, absolutely not. Depends upon who's making the stew, who's doing the teaching, how much effort they put out to teach people, how many books they produce so that their students will be educated in the way. So no, not every, every, everything, every orange, everything round is an orange, not every green turban is going to be the same. This is for people to find out. So as soon as you post and as soon as you become active you start to see all of the bad character and that's good because before it used to be traveling. You would travel into an area and you'd go into a dariqah or a different location and it was wild, it was like the wild west. You say, what kind of people are like this? And then you go back to your own dariqah and it was like disciplined, clean, soft, loving and it was quickly you understood, no not everything round is, is going to be the same. That every shaykh is different style, some are, are completely managing their people, some are like absentee owners, they absolutely manage nothing. So it makes it to be like a wild, like a wild uh, fighting group and that's not tariqah. And that's exactly why this system was de- sort of designed is that email, help me at Nur Muhammad, read the books, read the curriculum and three days a week questions so that you understand as if you're traveling with me because old times we would travel. This is a way of traveling with the shaykh, continuously finding out how he answers, how his demeanor, how the types of questions, how the issues and difficulties are to be resolved and the haqqaiq of the path. So you say, what is a guide? As Allah described the sun and the moon as a guide. Then you say, what is the demeanor of the guide? The who is the example of what the demeanor, that you have to have hidayat, an ocean of guidance but you have to be from wow and that your demeanor has to be loving, kind and soft. You're not a guide for all perfected people and that you call people kafir, you're a guide for all the people who have gone astray. Because they don't know even the, the reality of Surah Fatiha for the tariqah is where? The seventh verse, Ya kanabu ya kanistain ehtina sirata mustaqeen sirata ladina anamta alayhim ghayr al maghdubi alayhim wa ladaleen. Boom is the zawiya. Every zawiya is to catch the people who went astray and who have angered Allah. Tariqahs don't call anybody kafir. Their door is that. But when you false illusion, you thought your door is at the Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. That I only want the super perfected people. But that's not the reality. The reality of guidance is those super perfected people, they don't know, they don't need you or me. But our zawiyah door is at the bottom. In which the people whom are leaving Muhammadun Rasulullah knowing and unknowing that dawah was done to them or not done to them, they cast the net very wide 
They don't need them in their zawiyas because their zawiya is very limited space. But you come however you are, you're mentally not working, working it doesn't matter for us, click online. You watch, begin to learn the disciplines, that these are the realities, this is the love, this is the commonality of these practices, this is this. And that's why so many new people come to Islam from this channel and it's da'wah. On a weekly basis they're coming in new, 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 them going around and thinking, oh everyone's the same. No everything's not the same, Allah guided you here. That's why I put your shaykh's picture on your profile. Don't bounce around to all the different shaykhs. Just leave the adab of the shaykhs because they have to have an adab with each other. If they don't that's their problem. But the student has to have an adab to know who his shaykh is. His loyalty and firmness to his shaykh and stands by his shaykh and understands the teaching of his shaykh. And he never changes the title of his shaykh. He calls him shaykh. You don't bring the title of your shaykh down and then make it as if he's your buddy. So it means everything you do is to keep the, the tashrif and the honour of Sayyidina Muhammad and because people must be taught to respect the station that the shaykh represents in the proximity of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and why? Because if you joke and play now they're gonna think they can joke and play with Prophet No. Then when they have their title, when they do their work, when they do their da'wah that's it. You keep the respect, you keep the title. Even we were family with our shaykhs, never crossed that title. Never crossed the name, it was always Mawlana, it was always Shaykh, that was it. Never called him by his first name, hey how are you? And we're family at different levels. Means that the adab is all that we have, the mannerism is all that we have. It what, it's what sets us apart from everything else, from the animal kingdom and from the different tariqahs. And that we will be tested in our manners. To the right and left we'll begin insulting you, demeaning you, throwing change at you, trying to insult you. And you keep respectful demeanour because Allah is the one whom rewards us and Allah rewards good character. Why? He was so happy with Prophet he mentions in his holy Qur'an, Khuluqul Azeem. You are of a magnificent character. Can you imagine if the actions are weak, they're not 100% perfected, you make so many accidents but Allah loves your demeanour, loves your character. That's enough. Allah if He loves His servant He perfects everything about the servant. But if Allah is not loving the character of the servant, there's no action that you can have that will impress Allah other than good character. Because in the face of every test I send to you, you try your best to remain good character. People come all the time saying, oh this shaykh talk bad about you, this shaykh talk bad about you, this, this one talk bad about you. He said, if at least a thousand shaykhs aren't cursing you, you didn't achieve sainthood. What you thought, it was going to be oh like a party and everyone was going to love you? You have to read Taskiyatun Awliya where how many times they came to Abu Yazid al-Bistami, Qaddas Sallallahu Siru. They said, we don't understand what you're talking about. They would grab him and throw him from the city boundary into a pile of rocks then they threw stones to stone him and kill him. And every stone that began to hit him, he was reaching higher and higher paradises. I mean many, many stories of these awliyaullah of which we are nothing and nothing anything like that. But at least this is our path. People they don't know the path, they thought, oh everybody's like a big group, they all love each other. So no, not necessarily. They love Allah and Rasulullah 
and that their allegiance is to Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad and that they have good manners. Now we say we love everyone from all the Ahlul Bayt, all the holy companions, all mashaykh, anyone in any tariqah. If they have a love of Prophet well then we're at their feet ready to serve. Now if somebody else doesn't have the ability to say that well then they have problems with loving. That they have to take up with their Lord and pray that maybe love will enter into their hearts. But for the student must be ever aware the shaykh is going to be bombarded, be attacked, many backbitings at least by a thousand. If you go and ask external alams, oh how much they're going to attack. What is this ba? What is this thing? What is this? Because there's an inner jealousy that I don't know any of these knowledges. And I have to give a talk every Jummah for wudu. So they become jealous and angry. This is that why we gave that characteristic. But this is for our students to understand in this month why Allah draw the attention of the student on such holy nights with Surah Munafiqeen. Well but the assumption is 99% of people have a munafiq within them that they're not trying to fix. And as we traverse this world of light, well what are we going to come into and who are we going to come across? The 99% whom have munafiqeen inside of them. And every step of the way they're going to attack and every step of the way they're going to have a problem with it. And we said it's not the outside people, this community, that community, that community, it's our own community because it's inside the fence. So inside of this fence and boundary it's the inside that have a problem with everything. One whom chooses not to accept us means then they stay ignorant, they read none of the books, they know un no understanding of these knowledges and as a result they become very angered by ignorance. Because their inner realities, I wish I knew about these lights, I wish I knew how to make connection, I wish I knew about rabita and tafakkur and contemplation. Not a pride in the knowledge but everybody was hungry for the knowledge. And if they're being told not to achieve that knowledge then they become angered because of the void of the knowledge. And we saw that with our shaykh who had 72 books and when he would travel not one of these people had read any of them. None, they would just protest, no oh, we're not supposed to do like that. So we're not supposed to do, Prophet, Prophet described, don't tell us what your zikr people said that Prophet described seek knowledge all the way to China. So when your shaykh provides this table of immense amounts of realities they'll feast on it. You don't have to go outside to eat from someone else's table, he's provided you a buffet. Anybody read the seven books, memorized it, now ask us questions every Thursday? We're still waiting for some nice questions from them. That means that that's the food and the sustenance. Means if your shaykh has food for you, don't sit at anyone else's table because then all the shaykhs above will be looking, what are you doing at this table? Aren't you supposed to be eating the food that he served for you? So imagine in the physical, he provides a whole dinner for you. You get up, thank you, I'm going next door to eat. Why? Doesn't it make any common sense? So seeking of knowledge is eating, you're eating from the sustenance of the shaykh. What he put out with his heart and his secret, this was his amanat and his trust. And that's the loyalty of the student, they take from the shaykh, they take the knowledges from the shaykh. We haven't heard one room questioning that he memorized all seven books and now thank you very much I'll go eat somewhere else because I got everything that I can possibly understand. No, they're still asking about the color of a rock. So in that case keep eating, don't eat at other people's tables so that you understand the manners of the tariqah and understand that when you're loyal to your shaykh uh, many people will start throwing rocks. Remember at the beginning of the year we talked about Ashab al kaf Every student is like a dog following the tariqah. So what did Ashab al kaf their example? They're going to do Allah's work like the shaykh and the dog following. 
And they turned around and said, look, the dog is going to cause a problem because he's going to come and, and bark and distract us at the cave while we're doing Allah's work and, and seeking refuge from all difficulties. <coughs> kept throwing rocks at the dog to go away. And we gave many talks about that reality and you can check those in the second lunar month from Surat Al-Kahf talks. And the mercy that Allah gives and why the example of a dog is that it's, it's very loyal creature and that no matter how dirty someone is or how they're not of a high station, Allah's teaching that a dog achieved this paradise therefore I'm allowing all people to achieve this paradise. Just find one of these people whom are trying to improve themselves, your shaykh, your guide and accompany. And as a result of accompanying they're going to throw stones at you. So who are the stones? Those people with those bad characteristics. They throw stones all day long. If you post one nice post you get many stones, you have to delete their comments. You post one TikTok, you, even the TikTok itself will be banned, shadow banned, blocked down, Wahhabis start to throw rocks, tariqah people throw rocks and that's the process. Because Allah wants to see are you loyal to your shaykh? You're eating from his sustenance, you're eating from his knowledges, so why aren't you loyal? Why you have doubt? And that becomes the tariqah, that is the path. Is that take your path, be loyal to your path, take the knowledges, propagate the knowledges and that when the stone throwing and bad character comes out, you take a lesson from that and say, oh those people definitely need to be trained, they don't have any good manners until you come across a group that have a respectful demeanor and manners. And say, thank you so much, we have so much respect for Shaykh Nurjan but we follow this and this shaykh so we won't be accepting that post. So no problem, that was very beautiful manners. And that shows you, oh look somebody must have taught that person because they have adab. And the one who has not we call be adab, that they lack any adab. Well that's a reflection on who was supposed to be teaching them and that's the problem. When they don't put out knowledges, they don't put out any information but this huge jama'ah is trying to follow, they're not being taught anything. And as a result you have this sort of wild characters beginning to breed. And we pray that Allah guides, Allah opens the hearts of people to take the guidance, read the books, get access to these knowledges. These knowledges change the heart and the demeanor of people. And that build the affinity and love for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad and that the shaykhs continuously attacking the inner munafiqeen and the inner hypocrisy, the inner devil that is uh, destroying every goodness within the character of people inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Basir Surat Al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.